No rules. What? Well, if there ain't gonna be any rules, let's get the fight started. Someone count one, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from bitamount.com, bitamountlive.com, and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is April 16th, and this is not our regular weekly video. This is this little special video we're doing this week because of something that happened starting on Monday. Um, and uh, we're going to go into this, and you'll find it interesting. Uh, as many of you know, over the years, we've done a number of auction uh, videos and, and blogs on the bitamount.com site about fraud and fraudulent pieces we feel are being sold down in the Marietta, Roswell, Georgia area. Uh, some of you remember this, this situation from three years ago. We did a video on a company called the Lauren Gallery in Roswell. Uh, we, we pretty much eviscerated them with our opinion piece uh, and said that they, they sell nothing but fakes, copies, reproductions, and so forth. And uh, they threatened us with a lawsuit, and it was pretty funny. We got this thing from a legit, it's a real law firm, King and Yacklin, um, probably very nice lawyers. Most lawyers are actually sort of fun to be around. Anyway, they sent us a very formal cease and demand. They emailed us a copy, and they sent us a copy by uh, registered mail. Anyway, we took the one they mailed us, and we, we posted it here on the site, and it explains what their, their problem with us was. Uh, it didn't go anywhere. I, I wrote, I got a hold of them, and I said, if you have... If anything we've said is untrue, if we've, we've said something that's inaccurate, uh, we'd be happy to do a full retraction and we'll apologize. And that's fine. We'll take the videos down because there are a number of them on here. If you go and look under our uh, uh, page here on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, you'll find them. And uh, here was this. And it all sprang from this. This was the, uh, uh, the first uh, 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 blog we did on them and how they responded. And they said some rather childish and ridiculous things and um, more fakes and copies. And and then another auction house popped up called Bid It, and uh, nobody had ever heard of them before, and um, uh, I was, it was rather shocking. And, and, and they had the same sort of stuff. All of their auctions have the same types of materials, very rare Yawn Dynasty pieces, very rare Qing Imperial pieces, very rare Ming Imperial pieces, all in pristine condition, all worth you know, huge amounts of money, hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars each. And they just keep turning them out. These three auction houses, four auction houses now, keep turning them out like like this like the stuff is as common as, as, as feathers in a chicken chicken ranch. Anyway, that went on and on. And then there was the bidded auction house that turned up. Uh, the address we found for it was just a house. Um, this house here was where the auction was supposed to be taking place, I guess. I don't know. The whole thing was very strange. But we did take out a, a map from Google, and we mapped out where the different locations are. And here is this is Roswell, which is to the northeast of uh, Marietta. A uh, nice little town. And uh, they have this, uh, the Lauren Galleries are based there. The Bidded Gallery was based here in this residential area in between uh, Marietta, which is down here. So you have Marietta, Roswell. And now you have a new auction house that has sprung up. And this is what we were contacted about earlier, the Seven Seas Auction Gallery. Now, before I go any further, there is a Seven Seas uh, uh, collectibles uh, house clear out business that's uh, um, on the internet. They are not the same people. This, uh, they're not in Georgia either. There's someplace else like Tennessee or Kentucky, I forget, but it's not them. Okay, they're, they're, they're probably nice people. And unfortunately, these guys are using the same name, uh, which won't help them any. Any rate, uh, this is it. And I took a look at their web page to see what the, who they were and what they were about. And they have a lot of silly looking things, you know, that they put on there. And one of the claims they make on here is rather astounding. And is, I don't know if, what, what the laws are in Georgia about making claims, but this is a doozy. It says, worldwide community members. Well, you're a human being. I hope you are. Um, unmatched consigning expertise. And then here they claim as the world's largest collectibles auctioneer. That'll be, that'll be uh, news to Heritage. Uh, we bring our huge client base, technical savvy, and marketing prowess to the table to make sure you get the most for your treasures. Uh, from what I can tell, the first auction they ever did was uh, about a, a little over a year or so ago in 2020. And, in, and one of the sales was mostly bric-a-brac and collectibles and junk stuff that you could pick up at any flea market for a couple of dollars a piece. And they did an auction on it just, I think, maybe to have an auction of record on here. None of the stuff brought any money. Anyway, it was junk. And they did one sale that had some Asian things in it and didn't do very well. And now they're at it again. But it looks like they're getting a little fancier this time around. And we're going to take a look at some of the inventory that they're, they're offering. 
boring. Just to um, uh, get to the point, all right, here it is. This is how it appeals, and you have th this, these two gentlemen. Uh, this is the same guy twice, and then this guy. And here, here's the auction. Now, there's not a lot of content in here. This is not an enormous auction, but the pieces they have that they're representing as being Ming this and Yuan that um, are all copies. These are all fakes, all fakes okay and uh, uh here we have these these two guys and i don't know who they are i've never seen them before i know a lot of people in the antique business um they look like maybe the, there's this guy and another guy you'll see in a minute it looks like he's about maybe 20 or 23 years old 24 um uh, with a sort of a scruffy little beard and he's dressed like a a gangster in here i don't know why they thought that looks looks good but anyway that's how they dressed him and um he's holding up a plate that if it were authentic uh would be uh worth uh, by well, the MFA has a plate that looks like this, uh, this type of Yuan Dynasty plate, and I think they paid $20 million for it, from what I was told. Um, anyway, they have this one uh, in the sale with a uh, uh, eight to $9,000 estimate. It's got four bids. It's up to $375. If you're the bidder on that, retract your bid immediately. This is an absolute piece of crud. Um, the, the back of it just looks ridiculous. Uh, the glaze is all wrong. The piece is a fake. I, I don't know how else to tell you. Um, Chinese Yuan reverse double dragon motif, scallop rim porcelain plate, and so on. It is not a Yuan anything, all right? They put it in the title, they're wrong. They're not using the word style, type, form, whatever. Here is a Ming Moon Flash style thing, uh, and the kid is he's sort of giving you that come hither look. And uh, love his hair, though. Isn't that wild? You know, how how we got it to do that? He must have gelled the hell out of it. At any rate, um, this is a piece of junk, um, and it is uh, described down here as Chinese Ming blue and white dragon motif porcelain vase. It is not Ming, okay? Clearly not. It's probably less than five years old. And then you have this fellow here. Um, he's a rather happy looking guy. He's probably glad to have a job. And um, uh, he, he's posing here with a pair of what is purportedly Jing period dragon jars um, that, that were, um, you know, never made in pairs, but that's okay. And... Um, uh, down here, they have a, a description, Chinese Ming blue and white dragon porcelain lidded jars. That's a false statement. And then the uh, made in the years of the Jai Jing um, uh, reign uh, period of the great Ming dynasty, and because it is, it is a marked piece, it is a fake. It's a total fake. All right, and then we move along over to another another uh, a great rarity uh, is a, a fake uh, Yuan Dynasty fish carp plate. Um, uh, these are worth, as any all of you know, hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars each. Um, in this case, they call it. They are titling it a Yuan blue and white carp in foliate charger. All right, and there's a little bit of a write-up on it down here. In this auction, they're not, I don't think they're giving provenance to this as having ever belonged to anybody. And then here you have this uh, Ming Daosai dragon lidded jar, which is also a fake copy, whatever, uh, mark on base, and they have it titled as Chinese Ming Chenhua Daokai Dragon Motif Porcelain Lidded Jar. It is not. It is a brand new reproduction. It is worth absolutely, you know, what, maybe 50 bucks, 100 bucks as a decoration, and so on. So the wholesale is pretty much that way. The wholesale is just uh, uh, fake after fake after fake. Uh, so just a heads up, if you have it on your list of uh, auctions to uh, go to don't, or, or to attend online, because the, there's no physical uh, presence at this sale. Uh, I checked the address online. It looks to be located in a former limousine company address next to a s bunch of storage lockers on, um, on, uh, uh, in, in Marietta off of uh, whatever the address is that they have it posted somewhere on here it's on their website um, if you want to google it for fun you certainly can uh, the address is right there 4757 canton road suite 20 one eleven or two eleven a Marietta, um, and uh, it looks like it's uh, in, in this this pillory columned looking building. Anyway, it's junk. Um, and you, but feel free to go over and look at the uh, look at their their website and so forth. There are no names of anybody connected to the firm. There's no about us page. There's no information other than they claim to be the largest collectibles dealer in the world. Okay. Uh, which is, of course, is ridiculous. At any rate, that's it for this sale, and we'll do the other sale in a few minutes. All right, bye.
And now on to this week's video. Uh, I was going to do a separate one, but I realized the first one wasn't that long, so we're going to just add this on here, and this is, we'll take a look to see what went on on uh, eBay this past week, what's been happening over on the Bitamount Live page, and uh, some other things that have been added, including some good auctions, the, the rest of the auctions at Bonhams uh, that are taking place. There's one in Australia as well. Uh, we did a video earlier this week on uh, the collection. There's an amazing auction coming up in London. It's, the, it's, the, it's part one of the Roger Caverne uh, inventory and I assume some of his own collection 400 pieces take check it out no reserves absolutely going to be an event absolutely going to be a great event and uh, whatever you see for the estimates they're going to be blown to bits but it'll be fun to watch and if, if I'm up that early early enough to do it at that time of the day I'll try and record it because I think it's going to be uh, uh, an absolutely great auction any rate uh, here we are and some of you might have noticed that we redesigned the home page at bitamount.com just so you you know there's nothing wrong with your browser we felt one again, once again it was getting a little confusing and uh, we decided we'd do it this way so on the left side there is a section about the about the bit amount main page and then on the right side is a link to and some information about the new website the uh, live site where people are selling things and things have been selling it's rather nice to see we had a number of good sales this week uh, it's got, starting to get some traction starting to turn up in the analytics uh, we're very happy about that uh, we're getting 700 to about 1200 visitors a day already which is quite a lot for for a brand new site and uh, I hope you use it and if you're if you're going to post things I hope you do and uh, keep your price price is sensible and you're going to do some business one one item sold I I think the person barely had it listed I guess it sold within five minutes and it was a dealer and, and, and it wasn't a giveaway price it was just somebody was checking it they liked what they saw and they bought it all right so uh, keep that in mind um, one of the things that I wanted to mention was we added to the uh, the, the research page uh, by the way just so you know on the on the changes we made to the home page if you scroll down basically everything is still there um, and if you want to get to the reference section you click the black box it says bid amount and auction catalogs and books are right there and it brings you to of course this page and we have now 654 auction catalogs and so forth from the past and the ones in the top row are usually the ones if there are sales coming up this is where they'll be right at the top and uh, there's a number of them and it's all bottoms this time around it's very interesting some great things there's an uh, images of devotion some great paintings and so forth that are going to be taking place on April 21st in Hong Kong just about five days from now and then there's the uh, important Asian art sale down in Sydney. Some good paintings, lots of good objects in here. If you haven't seen the catalog, uh, you ought to go check it out because there's some things worth looking at. Um, let's just pop it open here for a second. And uh, here we go. There's some very nice paintings on the front end of the sale. Uh, some rather nice Cantonese market ones, some modern Chinese paintings and so forth. And with the names of the artists, of course, and all that business. And then lots of ceramics and, and bits and pieces, some good, good items in there. If you're in Australia, especially, you want to check that sale out. All right. And then over here, Asian art on Montpelier Street. Um, in, at Bonhams in London, this is uh, one of their, uh, their one of their other locations. They have some good auctions there. And in this sale, this is the one. If you're if you're a dealer or you're selling on the internet, you want to check this auction out. There are some very nice lots in here. Some very good pieces of furniture, carpets, robes, uh, lots of things to pick from. Lots and lots and lots of things to pick from all the way down lots of jades and so forth as you can see it's a very nice little auction and then after that there is the uh, h collection of ming furniture uh, we'll be probably doing this in a video next week uh, because there's some excellent uh, pieces of chinese furniture in here and as we we've seen in the past uh, especially in the past year and a half two years ming dynasty furniture has been blowing away estimate after estimate after estimate uh, very very strong market still it's 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 rather astounding but but i, th I think Chinese furniture has been woefully um, under uh, appreciated for a long time and uh, even during the boom of 2010 11 and 12 Ming furniture wasn't bringing uh, what it is now uh, there's been uh, the the real collectors have done very well uh, the people that have bought started buying this material back uh, you know back in the 60s 70s and 80s uh, we, we saw some great auctions uh, uh, from uh, many items that were bought from Grace Wu Bruce that went through the roof a couple of years a year and a half ago and that was the beginning of it all right, and then on to this, fine Chinese art on Bonhams. Uh, wonderful stuff on here, including uh, materials from the uh, Linda Rigglesworth, uh, the famous uh, Chinese silk dealer. 
lots of good things in here. We're going to be covering this a bit, I think, in the next video. Uh, some very fine pieces over here, the, the, the things from Linda. Uh, she's a legendary Chinese uh, silk dealer, expert on robes, textiles, and that kind of thing. She's been around for 50 years. Um, uh, hard to believe, but it's been that long. And uh, things like this, just stunning pieces of Chinese silk. This is Linda. And uh, flip over to here. There's some great rondelles, uh, some very, very fine rank badges with beautiful color, uh, some f uh, floor screens with silk on them. Uh, this uh, a, a very unusual sort of apricot ground uh, uh, imperial robe, beautifully done with a big, big estimate and so on, but it deserves it. And uh, that sort of thing. And we'll be covering more of that, I hope, next week when we, we get some time to uh, uh, do some recordings. Okay. And uh, now on uh, the Asian Art uh, uh, Bit Out Live site um, we had uh, quite a few uh, as I said we've had quite a few sales on here it's rather nice to see and the, the numbers are climbing how many items are listed on here going up a bit every day and uh, if you if you want to have a, a site to build and work on down the future um, we, we hope you put things on here uh, we're still working on the site doing things in the background to make it a little quicker and help upload things in a certain way and uh, doing all that we've been adding search engine optimization to uh, lots throughout here uh, uh, adding keywords and alt tags and so forth for your photographs so they get picked up on Google search and so on but it's slowly filling up it's filling up nicely with some good things things are selling and we're very glad um, if, you, if, if, if this is the kind of site you want to use please please come over and uh, load some things up and let's let's uh, build this into something really fun just as an aside I was reading something on e-commerce bites uh, which is the, the new site about uh, e-commerce e sales and people that do business on the internet uh, there, there's again talk that eBay may eliminate auctions uh, some people are saying they will other people are saying they won't uh, but they eBay is as as all of you know has made some big changes on their payment things uh, there's charging fees now for shipping they're charging fees now on sales taxes they're charging for all kinds of little extras and uh, I, I don't see that stopping anytime soon they're trying to squeeze everybody as hard as they can unfortunately I think it's a really bad business move but that's the way they're doing it um, so uh, keep that in mind. And just as an aside, uh, we noticed that uh, within two days of this site launching, um, the second opinion program disappeared off the eBay site. Not saying there's a connection, but uh, we, as you know, we have the second opinion um, uh, program we had with eBay where people could click on a link, send us a, a, an, an inquiry to see whether or not we felt the piece was authentic and what our thoughts were on it. And uh, that link is now gone off of eBay off of uh, uh, it was on uh, roughly 700,000 listings and uh, mysteriously overnight it disappeared because somebody pointed that out to me and I went and checked and it was indeed gone so I guess um, I don't I don't I don't seriously can't believe they think what we're doing is a threat to them but uh, that's that's uh, uh, the way things go sometimes anyway I don't care it's it's fine all right if people could still send us images through the regular things and and uh, we'll be happy to help out as we always do with the preview assistant and the identification assistant off the home page of bitamount.com all right now on to what happened on eBay this past week it was a little quiet this week there were some good things on Josh Chamberlain uh, juice 1499 who sells on eBay he has a fairly good size sale every couple of months did very very well uh, and we're going to get to some of the highlights from that and some other things all right first thing I wanted to point out was that uh, uh, let's see here uh, this plate sold this is a chamber of the uh, a Western chamber plate uh, romance of the Western chamber plate this was a rather nice looking plate uh, been nicely decorated well enameled uh, it was in fairly good condition ended up selling for 191 pound, uh, euros which is a good price for that this is Yong Chen period dish uh, that's not a bad price at all for 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 a plate with a well-known story, well-known pattern, and, and, and well done. All right, and then over here also on Katawiki this week was this. This is just a nice little almost blood red jarlet. The color, the red on this was really quite strong. It's a 19th century one, uh, judging by the bottom here, sort of early to mid 19th century pot. It had a line in the in the in the base. But it was the color I liked a lot. I love that ripe, ripe, rich, deep red. Beautifully done. And then it had this unusual white upper section on the neck, on the mouth, leading up to the leading up to the top. At any rate, it went fairly reasonably. 220 euros. Not bad. Nice little jar. It had some hairlines in it and stuff. But I liked the color. I liked the feeling of it. 
And I think that was an, it would be an interesting thing to buy. And then last week, remember, we, we talked a little bit. I mentioned that there was a very nice pair of fixed price. I didn't know. We don't know how often put fixed price items in the newsletter page, only if we feel it's a particularly good buy. And we had this pair of very nice Harado uh, beakers. They were eight or nine inches tall, uh, very nice color, uh, uh, very finely worked as all Harado pieces were. Uh, Harado was an island off the coast of Japan where they made imperial porcelain. There's a whole story behind it. And this is a double phoenix pattern example with, with uh, dragons on the, on the side of the necks. <clears throat> the proportions on this were very, very nice. I think it was in great condition. I think they said that there was a small repair to the tip of the nose of one of the animals, but that was it. And uh, we pointed it out in last week's video, and it sold. Um, and I hope one of you, I'm assuming one of you probably bought it because it sold within, a, I think, within a, an hour or two or sh very shortly after we posted the video. Just uh, maybe people had been looking at it and wondering, and uh, somebody grabbed it. And it says the best offer was accepted. Uh, so I, I suspect somebody paid, you know, 850 or $900 for the pair, which is a very fair price for a, a really good pair of Harado pieces. Pairs of Harado don't turn up all the time. And then over here to this, the pair of uh, Chinese Amari Kangxi period tea caddies. Matching pair, quite nice, quite a nice thing with a hallmarked uh, uh, silver caps added to them when they arrived in Europe. They had the typical fritting along the edge of the shoulders here that you see on these all the time. I, you almost, I, I can't remember the last time I saw one of these where it didn't have a frit or two or fritting all the way around one of the, uh, the, the drops of these because of the way they're potted and formed. And when they fire, they create little bubbles that frits and chunks off and so forth. And somebody bought the pair. This was a great buy. Somebody got a great buy. $393 for two of them. Now, you know, that brings them out to about 200 bucks a piece in Chinese Amari. Absolutely great deal. They were sold by a seller up in uh, uh, Montreal, Canada. This is uh, KO Treasures. They had a number of things up. I don't know who they are. They're fairly new. They only have 35 feed, uh, feedback uh, uh, comments, but uh, they, they seem to have nice things. All right, and then over here to this, one of these uh, Bunkrong uh, Thai bowls, uh, Thai market bowls. This looks like a fairly old one. Um, uh, all the way around uh, here, the, you know, the Daoguan period, or maybe even a little before, but a nice old one. These are old. The, the newer ones, the later ones, tend to be brighter in color. Uh, this was a good old one and had the co had an applied copper rim, which they have put on these. That was the applying copper rims was sort of a tradition started on Chinese porcelains back in the Song Dynasty, which was to protect them. Um, and, and even on the Song pieces, sometimes they left the rim unglazed so that the rim would fit, the metal rim would fit on a little better. And they were done in either copper or uh, typically in copper or, or silver. And then uh, uh, much later in the 20th century, they began using tin on some of these. But at any rate, it sold for $555, which uh, isn't a bad price for these at all. That was a pretty good price for an early one. Uh, that's sort of the price the ones from the 18, uh, 1880s and 90s bring. So I think that was a little better than average uh, a deal. And then over here to this, this really pretty uh, Chinese export uh, t teapot. Um, and um, uh, 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 creamer and uh, uh, bo covered bowl. Very nice little lot, beautifully decorated. I wanted to show you some of this. Look at this. This is really good work. Very finely gilded. Not any, no wear to the gilding at all. Very fine condition. Minute amount of wear on the finial from being touched over and over and over. Uh, but uh, a very good price. Here's a picture of the bottom. That's just exactly how it should look with this slight amberish uh, toning to it from firing, with a little bit of iron oxide pulling out and so forth from the kiln. And uh, here's a picture of the side. One of them had a little hairline in it. And just so you know, that could be, that could be, that could be cleaned out with a little hydrogen peroxide over time taken out. There's another angle of it right there. But the, uh, uh, the creamer and, or the gravy, it looks almost like a gravy boat, but at any rate, that and the teapot itself were beautifully done. And these, this, this, pot was done, you know, early in the 18th century, uh, 1800s rather, probably 1810 to 1820, something like that. Very, very old. And uh, nice looking robe. This was uh, Josh Chamberlain had this, a, a juice, 1499 is a user handle on eBay. Very attractive, uh, uh, multi-dragon robe, uh, good gilt thread decoration on it and everything. It was in very nice condition and uh, it did very well. Ended up selling for $11,600, but a very, very pretty robe. 
very, very pretty. And then he also um, had some other things we're going to get to. And then there was this China paid, uh, China trade grisai decorated uh, dish with a landscape scene in the middle. This is an export plate, uh, but very nicely done. It's done very much in the same manner that they did uh, uh, Beijing enamels on copper. Uh, you see this this style of painting more typically on those rather than on porcelain. And uh, uh, if you look around, you'll see them on a, particularly on latter 18th century examples. And I love the blue uh, mountains in the background. Very, very nice. And these pinkish yellow clouds. This is a really nice treatment up here in the clouds. Uh, pinkish clouds, sort of sunset clouds. And here's the sun going down in, in the background. And a few people milling around, somebody here with his staff walking and so forth. Just a very nice, attractive, very evocative scene. And uh, somebody paid $630, which is perfectly fine. That was a very nice dish, very nice looking dish, very interesting scene and uh, well done. And then over here, this was up this uh, 18th century Famille Rose uh, jar with a very nice uh, light blue uh, rue head up here at the top filled with flowers and then these these sort of exploding um, uh, Famille Rose decorated flowers um, coming up uh, from behind the balustrade uh, a very interesting view here's a picture of the bottom of it clearly an 18th century pot uh, judging by the foot rim and, and, the, and the appearance of the glaze and the enameling, the decoration, these little clumps of flowers, translucent glazes, all that stuff you want to see. And uh, somebody paid $1,959 for it. Uh, this was NZ Guy over in uh, Sutton in the UK. He's a regular seller on eBay. He's got about 4,200 feedbacks, and he gets some very nice things from time to time. And uh, we saw this and thought, oh, that's going to do well. That's a good-looking jar. And it did. And then over here for this, oops, I didn't enlarge that before we started. Let's pop this in here. This nice-looking uh, late Ming uh, jar, uh, rather interesting with these uh, prunus blossoms or plum blossoms coming up on it. Uh, nicely, nicely done though. Good deep cobalt blue. And you can see how they drew the uh, the pine needles in, and then they do these washes of a lighter blue over it to to, to make it look thicker. And uh, here's a picture of the foot rim on it. Very typical for these late Ming pots. Uh, all hand trim. You can actually in this one you can really see the knife marks, especially there where they trimmed away the extra clay once it was fired. Uh, and so forth. This was a pretty jar. This was in the newsletter for two weeks. I hope I hope if you collect these, you noticed it and, and took a shot at it. At any rate, it sold for $2,367, which was a good price, but not an unreasonable price because the cobalt was such beautiful color. The, a very rich, very, very rich cobalt blue and nicely drawn and rather unusually drawn. So I think that was a good uh, deal. And uh, this was not, not a huge piece. These never are. This one was around uh, six inches in height. It wasn't a great big table jar or something for flowers. It's fairly small. All right, and then over here to this is a Amari type plate. Nice looking scene. I like I like the the lady sitting underneath the uh, underneath the patio or the porch uh, roof, and she's got her table out with a, with a with a brush pot and some things coming out of it, and she's talking to this other lady in the garden. It's just a, a nice scene. And then they did this sort of nifty <clears throat> bamboo crisscross pattern with flowers running around the outside. Uh, very nice. Ended up selling for $351. Um, this was a seller also over in Kent in the UK. Some good things turning up over there. And this is back again to uh, uh, Josh Chamberlain, Juice 1499. This was one of the, uh, the, the uh, sort of a monk's or a priest's cape uh, that he had. This was beautifully done and in wonderful condition. Uh, this very lovely uh, damask, silk damask apricot ground, and then this pan these double panels of very fine needlework running all the way down it. Here's a good shot of it. We talked about it last week because the colors on this were very pristine. Really, really great. Uh, the only wear, uh, and I talked to Josh about it, he said the only wear that they, they saw anywhere on it was uh, here in the rank badge where the seam was. That was it. <clears throat> and you have to expect that on these. Uh, that's fairly normal. All right, and now oh, how much did it bring? About $9,066, uh, which was a perfectly reasonable price. That is a very fine piece of silk. And then onto this, this is something else that Josh had, and this is a great uh, uh, representation of the value of large bowls. Uh, this is a rose mandarin punch bowl. It's a, a very high quality decoration one. It's first half of the uh, 19th century, probably done in the 1820s, I would guess, judging by the quality of the work. But this bowl was massive. It was 24 inches in diameter, had some spider cracks in the bottom and so forth. And just so you know, there's another bowl almost this size. I think it's 22 inches that's on, on, on the global member pages now. And I don't remember who the seller is, but if you 
uh, you subscribe to that, go find it. Uh, this was a very n nice example here. They're these very strong cobalt uh, blue uh, mountains here. And just a, a very lovely example. Really, really fine bowl. But 24 inches in diameter. That's the key. This sold for $16,100 for a punch bowl. Uh, those of you that are familiar with this know that, you know, the 15-inch bowls in this quantity, quality sell for, you know, $1,800 to $2,600, maybe $3,000 somewhere in that range. Add on nine inches, eight inches in width, and the price goes up, ten, almost, you know, goes up, uh, 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 what's that? It works out to about, uh, about six or seven times what the, uh, it's 23 inches, six or seven times what a 15 or 16 inch bowls bring because they rarely made them that big. And the ones that they did make didn't survive because these big bowls are so prone to breaking. But that is a big, big punch bowl. And somebody, I think somebody got a gem. And then on to this, this uh, closes in uh, one day, was that featured, we had this on the featured page, the Yongshen period with vines and so forth, teapot, very, very nice. It's only, it's up to only uh, 402 euros. I think that's very reasonable. Uh, the last time we had one of these, I think we got around $1,000 for it, <clears throat> or 1,200, somewhere in, no, wait a minute, no, I brought 1,300 and something, that's right. 1,300, it went over 1,200, so $1,300. So it'll give you some idea how, where this has to go. All right, and then on to what's coming up to close out the week. There's still a number of good things on Katowiki. They had a lot of stuff that was sort of far-reaching that haven't sold yet, and these are all of them, and they will be in this week's newsletter page. If you haven't subscribed to it yet, come over to bitamount.com and sign up for it. The bit newsletter page, of course, is free, and you can, fi you can find some pretty good things on there every week. And um, there's a lot of stuff on here from Katowiki right now uh pretty interesting and uh one of the things that's closing is this it closes in a couple days very nice great big kangxi jar with lid with a foo lion on top of it it has a small repair i believe around the collar around here somewhere uh, but all the pieces that were just glued back in but this is big 64 inches tall all right this is over uh, 64 centimeters tall rather so it's uh it's uh, over two feet tall of over 24 inches so this is on the big big size okay and uh, it's up to 3800 euros and it should it should meet its estimate of 7500 to 8500 euros uh, i don't know what the, uh, uh, the the reserve is but uh, i suspect the reserve is you know probably in the, in the 6000 euro range or something but at any rate this is a big pot that's a very big one has a desirable pattern on it and we'll see what happens with that we'll let you know next week and uh, there's that teapot again, all righty. And then over to this. Um, this closes over the weekend. This is on eBay. It's a transitional period uh, jar. Uh, very nice pattern, very nice dark color. Unfortunately, he didn't light it very well when he took the pictures, but this is a nice jar. And the last one that I had uh, somewhat like this, uh, there's the uh, cockeyed, the, the cock-headed birds flying around. Uh, we sold one of these a, a, a few years ago. It was very well done same type of base so far and I think we we got around fifty five hundred dollars for it somewhere in there it wasn't drilled so you're gonna have to take off something for that but still uh, nice looking jar and uh, it's up to seven hundred and twenty dollars and it closes tomorrow Saturday all righty and that's about it for the week it's been a pretty good week we've had we've been awfully busy here uh, with a lot going on and uh, we're gonna be loading we're gonna be adding some things onto the uh, under the uh, bit amount live pages ourselves, we'll try and get a video out next week for some of the bottom sales because they're so interesting. Bottoms really did it this time around. I'm very happy to see that uh, they work. They work hard they're, and they're nice people. And um, that's it. All righty. Uh, have a great weekend. Si subscribe to us here on YouTube if you haven't already, and uh, come over to bitamount.com and bitamount live and, and visit. Sign up for the newsletter and take part. Join the community. Join the forum. There's a lot going on, isn't there? Yeah. Surprising. Anyway, uh, here we are. It's Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. We're, we had we had a bit of snow this morning. It was cold. Uh, gale winds off the ocean and uh, uh, typical spring day. All right. Have a great weekend, and I'll be we'll see you all next week. Bye bye.